Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's session. You are all here as part of the National Government Webinar Series to see the transform how you engage and collaborate with ArcGIS. My name is Noelle Loughran. I'm a marketing specialist here at Esri, and I'll be your moderator today. This webinar is being recorded, and we will send you an email afterwards to point you towards the recording if you'd like to view it again or share it with other colleagues. There will be a question and answer portion at the end of the webinar, and you can type your questions into the question window, and we will address them at the appropriate time. There will also be a few poll questions to give you the opportunity to interactively respond to questions and see the collective results. Now, I'd like to introduce you to our speakers. We have two of them with us today. We have Linda Peters. She is the Global Business Development Manager here at Esri and has been in the industry for more than 30 years. She works with statistical organizations around the globe to help them understand the power of GIS to achieve their mission. Charmel Manzel is also with us today. She is a solution engineer on the civilian and sciences team and specializes in helping organizations understand how to use GIS technology and in particular with a focus on GIS or citizen science. I apologize. So with that, I'd like to pass this on to Linda. Thank you. Thanks, Noel, uh, and welcome everyone. Really great to have you all here today. We're going to explore different ways to engage with users and encourage uh, collaboration. Today, we all need to easily and quickly configure apps that allow us to share data and tools and really provide an effective web experience. So in this session, we're going to look at ArcGIS Hub, which is an easy to configure community engagement platform, as well as Experience Builder. We'll help you learn about configuring sites and initiatives and web apps to leverage the power of your data in GIS to enable collaboration. Um, I will then invite uh, my colleague Charmel to show you some examples. Uh, we'll of course share some resources at the end um, and open it up for questions. Along the way, we will do a couple of polls, so uh, try and be a little interactive here with all of you. And I am going to actually turn my webcam off because of bandwidth considerations, but we'll turn cameras back on at the end. And uh, with that, we will get started. So it does all begin with the ArcGIS system. ArcGIS is a comprehensive geospatial platform. Now, traditionally, many of you may have thought of using GIS as a system of record to help you maintain a specific type of data. But today, GIS is services-based. It's open and distributed and extendable. And it supports many different types of activities, including collaboration and community engagement. It supports not only individuals, but teams and organizations. And we're going to take a look at that here today. But before we talk about technology or tools, I think we need to take some time to talk about our users. Who are your users? And how do they like to engage? Traditionally, we may have been sharing information to GIS professionals or statisticians or researchers and educators. But today, we have many different type of users and personas that we need to consider. And that includes developers people from the media, executives, policymakers, decision makers, even the general public and civil society. And each of these types of users have very different needs. Uh, as a statistician, I may want to access tabular data. A researcher may want to explore using open data to find specific information they're looking for. Developers, of course, want an API. They want to build data into an application. The media and maybe citizens, the general public, perhaps a story map is the best way to communicate with them. Executives, maybe a dashboard, maybe a report or a targeted information product for their specific need. So that's a lot of different things to think about. And today, we want to engage with more people, more decision makers, and reach that broad community in new ways. So first, we're going to talk about ArcGIS Hub. ArcGIS Hub is an easy-to-configure cloud platform allowing organizations to collaborate with their communities to accomplish initiatives. Tools like Hub allow us to convey information on important topics to share data and content, 
to collect data and feedback from the community, from our users, and foster collaboration. It truly provides a framework for engagement. And then there are other tools like Experience Builder, which allow you to build your app based on a designer-made template or start from scratch. It allows you to bring in maps and feature layers, add both 2D and 3D data for an integrated view. You can choose widgets to include in your app, such as maps or images or text or lists. It allows you to quickly transform your data into compelling web apps and pages without coding. We all need to be agile today and responsive and adaptive in what we build to serve these many different types of users. And the example you see on screen here in the upper right is, uh, is an example of that, right? I wanna build once and be able to serve out to the different types of devices that my users might use, whether that's a web app, a laptop, a tablet, or a mobile device. So how do we transform how we engage and collaborate? We all likely use many different types of hubs and apps today. And there are many industries who need to share or consume data, varying types of data from scientific data, such as we see coming from agencies like NOAA or, or NASA, to census and statistical data, healthcare, emergency response, or public safety information. And for as many different types of data there are, there are data users. So what I'd like to do now is invite my colleague Charmel to present some ideas. But before we dive in, uh, let's get a quick poll question from Noelle. Can you help us with a, a poll, Noelle? Of course I can. So I will launch this first one now and just know we will be doing one back to back. So we will have this one first. So are you using GIS for collaboration and sharing today? We'll give you a moment to answer yes or no here. We'll share the results and then we'll get on to our second polling question. All right, I will close this and share the results. So wow, look at this, Linda. 73% are doing that. That's great. Yeah. All right, so moving on to the second poll. I will hide that and I will go into the next one. So this is a multiple choice and we'd like to know this time, who are your users? Is it the public or citizens, educators, data scientists or analysts or researchers, managers or decision makers? And again, we'll give you a few moments to respond. Yeah, and it could be all of those, right? All right, we are gonna close this poll and share the results now. So this is a pretty good mix. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, fantastic. All right, well then I think we're going into a demo with Charmel now. So I will stop the poll, thank you. Thanks. Hopefully everybody can see my uh, screen. Yes, we got gotcha. you. Yes, we can. Great. Well, thanks for answering the poll and thanks for Linda for the introduction. Now at this point in time, I'd like to take a closer look at both of these applications that Linda introduced. And we're gonna look at some public examples. And we have time today to scratch the surface of the capabilities for each app. At the end of this session, we are going to list resources, providing additional opportunities for you to dive deeper and learn more about each application. And once I do the introduction, or a little bit of a deeper dive into introduction, we'll discuss each app in terms of which app supports the different types of users. And I'll do this by going through three scenarios and brief demonstrations. Linda introduced us to ArcGIS Hub using this visual. Let's explore these hub capabilities further. 
To convey information, sites are created. And these sites can be created by non-GISers, non-programmers. I can create a site, so I think anybody can create a site. You can include in your site different applications, maps, 2D or 3D data, dashboards, embed story maps, experiences. One advantage of ArcGIS Hub is that you can add your own custom domain. Another powerful component of ArcGIS Hub is the capability to provide a catalog of data, apps, and non-spatial data, including PDFs, tables, and spreadsheets. This is more than a catalog because visitors to your site can download your authoritative data or directly access the data through the data API. Powerful indexing and searching capabilities let you to filter and sort the data. Semantic search makes it easy to find items that are related to your search term. So these capabilities that I've just mentioned are available to anyone who has an ArcGIS Online organization. We'd like to call it ArcGIS Hub Basic. With ArcGIS Hub Premium, you can expand your level of engagement with your com trusted community, whether uh, it be partners, universities, project contractors, civic leaders, you provide them a community identity. And if you have this partnership, what's great is that you can sustain the collaboration. And one way to sustain the collaboration is to keep people engaged, uh, let them know what's up, what's happening, the latest news and events. You can request input put from the community. And um, from the community, at the whole public, you can ask for input with ArcGIS Hub Premium and ask uh, for them to compl complete surveys, give you feedback. This ArcGIS Hub provides a place to create and publish work done either internally or externally around a specific initiative. We updated ArcGIS Online just recently in last month in April, and we're going to be adding some new additional capabilities later this month, and I get to show you uh, some of that. In fact, I'm going to show a few examples right now. One of my favorite national government examples is uh, from DHS, the Homeland Infrastructure Foundation level data called Highfeld. DHS maintains it, and a lot of federal agencies add this data, which provides open data to support your community preparedness, resilience, and research. We can uh, access the data, search on specific fields, and then also explore categories. I'm going to select communications for today. And when we look at the data that are the catalog that's available, there's data, there can be also documents and links to applications and maps can be included. Let's select cellular towers. I receive a nice depiction of the distribution of this data. I have the attributes and at the bottom, based on that semantic Search, I have related data that I might be able to use in my research or my analysis or for my community. Let's select the data tab. I have access to all the attributes and if I'd like to focus on a specific state, let's say that I'm in Kentucky and I want to just look at the, the cellular towers in Kentucky, I can do that. Over on the top right hand, I can download the full data set in various formats, or even just this filtered data set of Kentucky cellular towers. What's really exciting is the APIs. By selecting the APIs, the data API, I can bring in this data into my applications, into my analysis as the full data set, or again, as the filtered data set. Well, this catalog and look and feel has uh, been utilized by many agencies, as you see, DHS, for years. What's going to happen at the end of the month is that uh, we're going to have a refresh look for this catalog. And let me get to show you a, a, a sneak peek. Well, it's not really a sneak peek because it's publicly available. You can actually go look at it yourself. Uh, and um, I will add a link to a, um, a blog that describes what's coming. 
so we have access to the same type of information. Here we're looking at 2018 fire occurrences from the U.S. Forest Service. I have my map. I have access to my table. I really like the table is big because I, I can see it better. I um, also can download the data in my various formats. And um, I can even, with download options, request a new file, download a file so I can have more interaction and make sure that I have the data I need. Filtering the data, I really like the styling option so I can filter the database. Let's see here we have fire types. Automatically, I get to symbolize and style the data simply, but it's nice to have that. For about the data, I can see the licensing, the number of records, the, the published dates, and if I select on more information, I have the full summary and my, again, my additional items and features and data that might be interested based on my search. and the uh, ability to create a map, create a story, and link through this to this data immediately to applications. It's pretty exciting. One of my favorite sites uh, is related to community science. So the Field Museum in Chicago has a monarch community science project where the citizens are requested and, and encouraged to engage. I can, with this ArcGIS Hub Premium site, sign up and once I sign up, I'm part of the community, I will receive notifications. And this is great because we, they really are trying to better understand monarch butterfly sightings and how the milkweed gardens, especially in urban areas, are providing habitat. So if I want to get involved, I provide that information on the steps to get involved. And I mentioned that ArcGIS Hub Premium keeps that ability to add in events. So there's some events coming up for the community. And then I can also go down and add in or click to submit my survey, my information for my butterfly sightings. And this is created with Survey123 integrated into the application. You'll see that with all the applications we're discussing and working with, that there's a great way uh, part of, I should say, part of the RGIS system and the community, you can integrate and add in dashboards, surveys into these applications. On the federal side, fed feed families. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Hopefully you, hopefully you have. It's a government-wide campaign encouraging federal employees to give to food banks and pantries, all under the United Against Hunger initiative. And underneath this site, similar to the uh, Chicago Museum, you have information on getting involved. You can look at the results through a dashboard, view and filter it by department and agency, and you record your donations through a similar form that I showed you with the survey one, two, three. What I really like about this site is the success stories. So in the success stories, you get to add in um, through a, a form, share your success um, story, and it's just a want to, of course, upgrade and, and show <laughs> for me today. Uh, but you, what we have here will, will be a list of success stories on the left-hand side, a map, and uh, additional information on that. As that's refreshing, I'll continue on. Ah, I hate when things get slow on a live presentation. So I've shown you these several examples of ArcGIS Hub and um, Premium, ArcGIS Premium. I'll come back to that one if I have time. Then we have the ArcGIS Experience Builder. The Experience Builder is a new web app builder within the ArcGIS ecosystem. You can create at web applications with Experience Builder in the ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. And you have many choices for these applications. They could be non-map centric, map centric, have many different maps in them, including 2D, 3D, single pages, and they, building the apps, have multiple mobile optimization. And I'll show you that in the demonstration letter, later. So to create your experience builder app, 
you first start by configuring out of the uh, um, box templates and widgets. You organize these widgets and think of the widgets as maps or text or filtering tools. The latest release of ArcGIS Online in April, Experience Builder includes four new default te app templates and new widgets, including query, chart, coordinate conversion, and a widget for branch version management for your data, which is exciting, plus enhancements to existing widgets like the table, map, and embed widgets. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning these, don't expect you to, to I'm not going to test you at the end of the day to ask you which widgets we've added, but the, the point is that we keep adding capabilities to ArcGIS Experience Builder and enhancing them. So if you have a request, then please go to the Esri Community ArcGIS Ideas and add in your request there. You can customize the look and feel of your apps and with uh, themes, adding your own organization's branding, and integrating 2D and 3D content into one app. What I li really like about the ArcGIS Experience Builder, well, there's many things I like about the Experience Builder and ArcGIS Hub. With Experience Builder, you have extensible framework. Developers can access the ArcGIS Experience Builder Developer Edition to build right, your own widgets. Maybe some of you in the audience today are, are developers. You can create your own widgets create your new templates that meet your needs of your project, your organization. This developer edition is available on the ArcGIS for Developers website. We had our last release in January and we will be expecting a new release soon. I don't like to be specific, uh, but it is in the works. So stay tuned. Let's look at some examples now. Oh good, my success stories. Ah, not completely, no, nope, didn't come up. Okay, I'll continue going back. Well, this example of an experience builder is with CDC. It's a very new site and I was excited to find it to share it with you today because it's related to uh, 27 chronic disease measurements. So helping our communities better understand uh, the prevalence of diseases in our area. Now, what ha happened is that CDC worked at um, the place level. There's, these are place boundaries. I'm not sure if you've ever seen these, but these are place boundaries. This is Richmond, Virginia. And we have um, data, these point data, that talks about uh, the prevalence of, in this case, arthritis in the area. Well, I have to say, as a county planner or a state planner, this is very hard to interpret. The CDC group, in, in coordination with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and CDC Foundation, actually used statistical analysis and created a interpolation of the data so we can statistically accurate, so we can understand the data and a wider distribution at the tract level and the county level. And I have to tell you, this is much more useful. I can select on the county and see that information and then start planning initiatives, start planning actions, start uh, educating the public. Another nice website. I guess it's uh, I'm on the health bend here for Experience Builder, but Experience Builder, we've seen so many websites with COVID data. What I like about this one is that we're looking at the data in 3D. It's an interactive 3D view. I can select the region that I want to focus on, and we're in Chile here. And I can continue diving deeper into the data and look at the data based uh, on the symbology. One thing that I'd like to point out at this po point, point out at this point <laughs> at this time, is that you can utilize these applications together. You may be familiar with adding in a. You saw me add a survey one, two, three into a hub. We're talking about Experience Builder and ArcGIS Hub. So we can combine these too. So at this UN. Urban Indicators Database as uh, part of the Sustainable Goals Initiatives. I have here a ArcGIS Experience Builder site. I can pan over the different cards utilizing this ArcGIS Experience Builder site, 
select health, let's say, and let's explore this further. What happens? Well, hopefully you know by now, and this because of this look and feel, that this is actually an ArcGIS Hub catalog. So we have integrated the two because of the needs of our users of, and they want to have access to the raw data. Another great example is from the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. And this is Climate Change Indicators Dashboard. And all these dashboards and experience builders and hub sites are publicly available. When they were creating this user experience they you know added in a uh, app mapping application but they also decided they wanted to dive deeper at the country level so let me select countries and when i start searching by my country names if i select a country you don't know it but i do that this is actually opening up an experience builder site developers want to use that for this capabilities for each country to have their own page related to the climate change dashboard. So now I want to move in, that was a couple of examples of, from live examples of ArcGIS Experience Builder, and previously ArcGIS Hub, and I'm gonna put the links in the chat when I finish so you can go to those live. And they also will be part of um, the handouts. But now we want to move into my scenarios and my live demonstration. And in this first scenario, what if your users of your web application want access to your authoritative data? Which app should I use? The RTI system has multiple ways of providing data download options. And I tend to lean towards the data catalog capabilities of ArcGIS Hub Basic. Remember, if you have an ArcGIS Online organizational subscription, you can create an engaging experience. So let's go ahead and look at how you would add in content. So for this webinar, I created a hub site, and I'm not gonna go through the details of creating a hub site, but what I wanted to do first is provide the capability of searching. And I have the search dialog already added into my hub site. Let's go ahead and just, I'm just gonna remove it for a second. And how, did, how do you add that search dialog? Well, within the hub builder here, I have ability to add in various things into my layouts, an application, an image, a survey, signing up, events, and here is the search tool. It's a card, search card. I insert it to the right. It's there, it's, it's ready to go. I'm gonna save. I am going to publish this draft. Oh, having this ability to publish the hub site, or which I should say, once you publish your hub site, immediately you need to edit it. And so you can work in a draft mode and and get everybody's approval, and then start looking at your um, ability to publish that into the final. So here is the published version and my search. So I have some data in here. Uh, I've already searched for it. it's related to marine. Here's the data, great. But I also wanted to look at my data related to clinics. So I, at the top of the screen, I've typed in clinics. And I have Chicago Fast Track Clinics. How did I add that data to this experience, um, to the ArcGIS Hub? I go through Edit. And now the data that's shared to my content library, which is a group in ArcGIS Online, is made available. So let's just go ahead and remove that. And I'll show you how I can add that back in. I'm going to add existing content and I am going to find it in my organization underneath my content. It's the data and I'm going to search for my data that's related to clinics. Add in the, fa the Chicago Fast Track Clinics and just the Fast Track Clinics in general. So we'll have two, two sets added in. 
And that's all I need to do. If I go back to my uh, initiative site, and if I go back and view the published, I don't even have to republish it, which is nice. I can go under the search, type in clinics, and there, they are available, and that's how easy it is to add data to your data catalog. For my second scenario is, as a website developer, you've been asked to create custom tools in a very modern format. And for me, that speaks to Experience Builder. Let's look at the development side of Experience Builder. I have, this is, I've already logged in, and I have a couple of sites already built, and now I am going to create a new one. A couple of applications already created. And this is the templates. I have a lot of templates of, you see, Foldable, Launchpad. If you've ever created web app builders, those look, sound very familiar. And at the bottom, dash and indicator, monitor, reveal, those are those four new templates available. I already have one created or started. And so let's look at US Forest Visited. I have um, two pages. And I have some work to do on here. So I am going to look at the second page. And on the, um, the left-hand side, the top, I'm going to select my second page. I want to add in a survey into this experience. I can do that by clicking the Add button, and here are my widgets. These are the out-of-the-box widgets. I have one for survey, select the survey, decide where it's going to be placed, and then create the survey over on the right-hand side in this environment, or in this case, I've already pre-created the survey, and for this survey, I'd like to find out which, which state have you visited a U.S. forest. There's a couple of other things that we can add into here. Well, actually, there's a lot of things we can add in here. And we have nothing in here to help people uh, turn layers on and off. And so I would like to draw, drag and drop a widget controller to the top. And I can add in multiple widgets. Let's say I want to, to show a legend. I can add in a widget to turn layers on and off. I can add in a widget to filter. All these uh, widgets can then be configured by selecting them, and the dialog on the right-hand side gives me the step-by-step uh, information that's needed to make this widget active. Now, I have another experience site that's already finalized, and I'm going to move to that now. This is called A Glimpse of the Continents, and it was created from the scenic multiple page template. It has cards, bookmarks, widgets, uh, and even a survey one, two, three at the bottom. What I want to point out here, well, one, it looks like a fabulous, it's a fabulous interactive site. But up in the top right-hand side, I can look at a live view of this. I can turn the live view off. Right next to live view is the ability to edit the page for a large screen device, for a medium-sized device, or what I'd like to look at is what does it look like on a smartphone? And you can choose the smartphone. I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit. What's nice about this is if I have cards and looks and feel that don't look great at a mob on a mobile device, I can start rearranging this to make sure that experience on the mobile device is good. So let's look at a live view of the mobile, um, what, it, what my application would look like in a mobile device. I have ability to go scroll down. Let's select Japan. They've brought in 3D data here, good descriptions, and I can interact, move to a new site. I can go back to uh, the home. And within this page, I have access to the survey, very similar to my survey in the forest. This survey is asking which country or region have you been to. So those are my examples of uh, experience builder. My third scenario is as a constituent, and they want to understand how your organization is supporting the initiatives. 
And I mentioned this earlier, ArcGIS Hub Premium allows that ability to engage with your community, open up surveys to get feedback with them, feedback from them, I should say. But you also have the ability to combine the ArcGIS Hub and ArcGIS Experience Builders. And I showed you a few examples. And I want to take the time now to combine Experience Builders into an ArcGIS Hub site. So let's go back to my ArcGIS Hub site I created. We'll go back to the initiative main page. At the top on the header, we have Experience Builder Embedded. That is a separate page, and I can open up that page, look at the Experience Builder page, and easily embed an application. And what's wonderful about this is that because it's in the ArcGIS system, it knows and it helps me easily add in a Experience Builder or a dashboard or a story map. But in this case, we're focusing on experiences, and I can look for my glimpse of the continents, add it in, I have options to change the size, and we have it ready. So let me go ahead and save that, make sure that I save that. And in fact, I'm just going to even publish that draft. See how easy and fast it is to publish it, and then it's available for the public. It's pretty nice. Well, there's a second way of embedding or adding in another like an experience builder into your RGS Hub site. And I'm going to do that through going to this header of my page at the initiative site, the main site, select the header. Under menu, I already have that experience builder page linked. I'm going to add in another link to existing content. And hopefully you'll understand that because it's in the system and the ArcGIS system, I can easily add in and search for applications within the ArcGIS. Now, did that add it in? It, what did I do? Here we go. Experiences, add it in. Select. I think I hit select and uh, or cancel before. And it's added in as a glimpse of the continents at the top bar. And I can rename that if I want to. I'm going to publish the draft very quickly so I can show you the final version and show you the different options of embedding and linking to. So this is the home page. I'm going to select Experience Builder Embedded. And I am going to select a glimpse of the continents, that same application, Experience Builder, and combine together. So that is just, hopefully you realize that you have access to powerful application builders within the ArcGIS system. And I look forward to you sharing with us the hub sites and experience builder sites that you create moving forward. At this time, I believe we'd like to engage with you and ask another question. That's right, Shermel. So I will go ahead and launch our third and final polling question. So this time we would like to know if you're focused on transforming how your organization shares information and collaborates. So you have one of the following answers to choose from and we will leave this open for a few moments and share the results. And with that, I will close the poll and share the results. So it looks like most of you are, are looking to do this and you're hoping to use ArcGIS in this way. So that is great to hear. We hope all of the information that Charmel just shared was really helpful. Um, and now from here, we will go back to Linda. 
Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Noel. Um, you are welcome. I'm going to hide this screen. Thank Perfect. you. Here we are. Yes. So hopefully you can see my screen again. Um, that was a, a really great walkthrough from Sharmel. I mean, there was a lot to digest there from the, the hub examples that she showed and the experience builder, plus the combination of those together. Um, I know it's it's a lot to think about, but you know, what we see is that tools like this really help us as we face the many challenges we do today in national government organizations. Um, we all have a lot more demands on us, uh, expanding expectations within our organization, you know, an increased demand for more and more information and, and much more quickly, right, near real time uh, becoming a, a thing now as well. And of course, increasing demand for higher quality data. So how do we do all of that while still respecting uh, data privacy concerns. And the technology can let us do that, um, but we have to also think about um, some of the other pressures that we're facing, like uh, budgets and revenue and, and staff resources, and, and how do we get these things done? And I think and hope that what you saw today is that with the use of tools such as Hub and Experience Builder, we can begin to be more responsive. Um, again, we saw some great examples, the, the homeland infrastructure, uh, feds feeding families is one of my favorites, um, but the CDC places and IMF, even UN Habitat, all of these are using the tools to better serve their users. And by using GIS for collaboration, we can get timely information to those decision makers and we're able to deliver much more information. Um, of course, by using GIS, we can improve accuracy and, and engagement overall with our user community and that helps us improve our overall responsiveness. Now, with that, I want to put a few resources up on screen. Um, we really wish to thank you for your time today and, and, and leave these for you. And um, there are a lot of things here, but I encourage you to take a look at the resources pages, the Getting Started pages. There are learn lessons already available as well. So a lot of things out there to help you get started or if you've already gotten started to, to dive in in a more advanced fashion. Um, but with that, um, we're going to stop talking now so that we can take your your questions. So I want to uh, throw it open and back over to Noelle to uh, help us walk through a Q&A session. Perfect. All right. And I have my webcam back on. And again, I'm so sorry. We are working from home and I do have some antsy dogs behind me. So I apologize. <laughs> if you hear any background noise, I will try to keep them quiet. So we did have a couple of great questions come in from all of you. So we can go ahead and get started with those. First one and Charmel, this one's for you. Um, the charts that were shown in the Experience Builder webpage, are those facilitated by an ArcGIS product? or is that something that was coded into the page using something else? Let me unmute. <laughs> Great question. And I, um, with the last release of ArcGIS Ex Experience Builder, we have added some of the charting capabilities. And I have to admit that for the one that I've showed, from the IMF, I am not sure if they use the, the, the new capabilities or if they embedded the uh, open source chart. But what's nice about that is that you have the capabilities to do that. So if there is something out there that one of your favorite charting capabilities, you can embed that. It's, a, it's an, the environment that Esri has built is flexible. Hopefully that helps. But please do yeah. try out the new charts. <laughs> Of course. And so uh, next question is, I want to use open data. What tool is best for me? Ah, so he, they want to use open data. So you, if you're like at a high, you know, if you're at the high field data site and you want to use that data, then I, um, what you would do is, uh, access the data in your ArcGIS Online organization. 
and you can conduct a lot of analysis. I just did a presentation yesterday with Arches Online analysis capabilities because there are a lot of capabilities in Arches Online to, to study the data and bring in data, not only from that open data source, but from also, we didn't have a time to talk about it today, the um, RGS Living Atlas. So you can combine data from the Living Atlas, like if you're looking for state boundaries or regional boundaries, bring that data in from the Living Atlas and bring something in from Highfield and do some analysis in ArcGIS Online. But you also can bring these feature services into ArcGIS Pro if you have desktop and conduct your analysis. And you, oh, and if you're, we, we could go on all day talk about analysis. <laughs> yeah. I, I might, I might add to what Sharmel's saying though too, because um, as a, a data producer you have to think about if how you're publishing your open data and that's where hub and, and open data i think is so important right and we see some great examples of that in the community already um, but you do have to think about how do your users want to engage and if they want that open data um, that hub is probably the right tool for you excellent so we have a, a really fun question because this wasn't actually something I think we touched on, but someone's asking about Hub Premium. So we are wondering if ArcGIS Hub Premium is available to NOAA employees. That is a great question and I don't <laughs> have the answer to it, but perhaps we can take that one offline and come back to the user who's asking. We'll, we'll get your uh, account manager to, to come back and confirm on that. Of course. Yes. And maybe is there a way that we could maybe spend a little bit of time talking about what Hub Premium is or do we want to leave that for offline as well? Well, everyone has access with ArcGIS Online. You have access to ArcGIS Hub Basic to, to, uh, to create these catalogs, to create these sites. Hub Premium allows us, um, for example, Noelle said I'm, I'm into uh, community science, citizen science, and if you want to have applications that are open to the public, then Hub Premium is a great way of doing that and providing that license. So you, um, we do need to double check. Um, we can uh, connect you with um, the account manager for the specific agency, NOAA. Perfect. Next question. Are there any differences with the experience builder in ArcGIS Enterprise versus ArcGIS Online? Yes. <laughs> and the, typically, the, the, the situation, if you think about it, with ArcGIS Online, we just had a release last month. And since it's a software as a service, it's in the cloud, and Esri maintains that environment, we pushed out that uh, release and you have access to it immediately. If you think about experience, um, enterprise, RTS Enterprise is managed by your own organization and it might be on your own uh, data center or your own cloud, but no matter what, you always have your own agency's steps, a processes of updating a, uh, a, a new release. So, um, so there's there is always going to be a lag um, in the what's available in ArcGIS Online and what's available in ArcGIS Enterprise for that reason, and um, for just the standard updating. Excellent. So next question: My organization is partnering with a citizen scientist for a study on air quality. Volunteers will submit data and create maps. What should I use? And it sounds like perhaps that's a great use of Hub Premium. Exactly. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so next question, I want an internal site to function as a landing page for specific div divisions so they can easily find relevant content. What do you suggest? Yeah, that would be enterprise sites, I think, Charmel. Don't you? Yes, I, I was going to kind of wait to see if you were going to answer. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I would say, so a, a companion to ArcGIS Hub Basic is with you have ArcGIS Enterprise. And the, to me, when you're saying internally, you're, it's very sensitive data or, or information. And so you have, hopefully you have access to ArcGIS Enterprise internally. And within ArcGIS Enterprise, you have the capability today with any ArcGIS Enterprise to create sites. 
and sites are that front looking page that I showed you with ArcGIS Hub. So yeah, that's that would be the one, the go-to, Linda. Right yeah. on. <laughs> but you, you know, you it all it kind of depends also what you want to include. But I'd start with sites as, as one of them. Experience yep. builder can have can also be used uh, as far as it depends upon what kind of resources you have. Great. All right, and I think one final question. Oh, sorry, Linda, were you saying something? No. Go ahead, Noah. So one final question before we close it out today. So agency is requesting feedback on a project and wants to increase public participation. Um, and they're looking for perhaps the public participation to be um, anonymous. So is there any is there anything that they could be using here? Is that like Hub Basic, Premium, maybe Survey One Two Three? All of the above. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> you, yes. Yeah. You can use. Um, Survey one two three allows you to to collect data from the public as is, um, and the hub environment g gives you that capability of um, giving them more information. And anonymously, you just do some um, inf you, you make sure that you secure the service. We have a lot of blogs out there. I'm going to put my email address in here if you have um, questions, specific questions, and um, I can help give you specific um, links to some blogs and additional information. Yeah, I mean, you showed a couple of great examples, Charmel, of embedding a survey questionnaire today, um, and, and I think there are many different ways to do that. So again, I mean, this is part of our challenge, right? Which is the right tool? Um, and if it's a simple survey, maybe just doing a survey one, two, three is the right way to go. Um, but perhaps you want to embed that into your hub or, you know, your experience. So really think about what you're trying to do with your users. And, I, and it's perfect. I spend most of my time talking to customers and people who are trying to implement, talking through what's needed and helping guide, you know, like, oh, why don't you consider that? So we're happy to have those discussions with, the, with you. Excellent. So actually one more question. Oh. Actually, it was a great, great segue, this last question that came in. So we will be, pro uh, we did record this session. We will be posting it online. All of you will receive an email from GoToWebinar tomorrow with a link to view the recording. Um, there was also a lot of really great information and links that were provided by Linda and Charmel in this session. So I'll be sure to include some links as well so you can have access to those resources along with the video. So all of that will be shared with you and we will get that out to you tomorrow. And with that, we'd like to say thank you for joining us and we hope to see you in our next national government webinar. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you.